All right, everyone. I would like to talk about block diagrams, right? When you have a block diagram, which is a standard tool to represent how things are um, connected with each other in a control system, uh, most of the time you would like to write the close-up system transfer function to assess uh, close-up system stability, right, 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 look at the denominator, find the poles, and to understand, you may want to find the solution of the system, so on and so forth. You would like to understand something about the closed-loop system stability. So, when you have a block diagram, you would like to find the closed-loop system transfer function. And today I have two examples, basically. An easy example, what I, I will explain what I mean by that. And a slightly harder example. And, you know, as this being said, different books covers block diagrams. In a different way, you can do block reduc diagram reductions. These days, none of them is necessary, right? If you have a complicated block diagram, MATLAB can find you, Simulink can find you, it's closed up system transfer function. But still, as control engineers, we would like to understand how things are computed, how closed up system transfer function is computed when you have a block diagram. So I will explain two important points and then with this you will have a deep understanding how things work with block diagrams. All right, the one I'm gonna look at uh, this one. First of all, uh, block diagram nomenclature. Um, here you have arrows with in, which indicate how signals transmitted. The purple dots indicate pickoff points and in a pickoff point, basically if this is Y of S, then this is also Y of S this is also y of s so it is kind of representing the same signal taken from that pickoff point point. and some injunctions are for example if you look at this this line you have here is basically this signal minus this signal minus this signal okay as this being said let's start from this one I would like to find closed loop system transfer function, the transfer function between Y and C. So I always start from where it ends and then close the loop, which I will highlight with my um, blue marker. We start from here Y, this becomes Y. Um, this signal becomes here C minus Y, right? C minus this Y multiplied by this transfer function t1 this signal becomes t1 multiplied by c minus y now i would like to calculate this signal so i need to know this signal this signal is nothing but y multiplied by t of s t3 multiplied by y um, so this signal becomes t1 c minus y minus T three y. Now I am closing the loop. This signal multiplied by this will equal to y. So we have y equals to t two. T one c minus y minus t three y. So I would like to arrange things. I now have a form that, in addition to my transfer functions, all the signals depending on y input output y output y so i would like to group things that depend on the command c and the output y um so y equals to t2 t1 c minus t2 t1 y minus t2 t3 y or y 1 itself i am sending this to the other side plus t1 t2 plus t2 t3 equals to t1 t2 c close of system is defined between output divided by the input so we have t1 t2 divided by 1 plus t1 t2 plus t2 t3 here is our close of system transfer function at this point you can insert the numerator and denominator of t1 t2 t1 t2 t2 t3 simplify things and arrive always a single polynomial representing the numerator of your closed-up system and a single polynomial representing the denominator of your closed-up system by simplifying things, um, arranging things, and here is your closed-up system transfer function. Now you can look at its stability for uh, properties, you can find its solution for a given command to understand how it behaves, oscillates or not oscillates, so on and so forth. All right, 
so this was basically the first example. In the second example, I would like to do the same thing. I always start from here, then close the loop, like we did here, right? So we started marking things, we find these signals and everything, and then multiply this, and we multiply this signal by t2 and obtain y, we close the loop. I am going to do this, do the same thing here with my blue marker. Now here, this is y, this is a pick off point, so this is also y y multiplied by t4 is basically t4 y here i am just highlighting the signals that i get rid of i am closing the loop i need to go through each signal now this signal is c now i would like to write this signal i got stuck the reason i got stuck well i need to know this signal but it is here, right? So if without knowing this signal, I cannot know this signal, so I cannot know this red signal. So this is what I meant at the beginning. This is the harder version, this is the easier version. When something like this happens, right? You get stuck, you don't know here the signal. You need to proceed, give it a, give it a name. You know, um, I'm gonna mark it as unknown signal I'm going to call it U. I don't know it for now, unknown. So, all right, I am going to proceed with this. Now, I just labeled it as U. At the end, don't forget, you need to find U of S. I am proceeding for now. This signal becomes, I am writing here, C minus T4Y minus this unknown signal. And it is multiplied by T1 so that once this signal is multiplied by T1, you are going to have this signal, T1 multiplied by C, T4Y minus U. And this signal here was basically it's inside. I just multiplied by T1. Now you can go ahead, since you know this signal, you can calculate U u equals to t2 multiplied by this signal that you have here t1 c minus t4y minus u let's give it a star i will worry about it in a second now this signal which is this one multiplied by t3 we obtain y so y equals to t3 multiplied by t1 c minus t4 y minus u now i am going to use this star equation u equals to t2 t1 c minus t4 y minus u so the punchline is if we back up for a second let me use a different marker Right, we started from here y, this becomes y, this becomes t4y. At this point, I know this signal, I know this signal, I don't know this signal. For every signal that you don't know, give it a name. And for every signal that you don't know, in this case, we just have one unknown signal. You are going to get an equation for each unknown signal. And then Basically, you are going to solve this and insert to the main equation that you see here. If you label two unknown signals, you are going to have two extra equations. If you label three unknown signals, you are going to have three extra equations. So it always goes like this. And then once we label this U, this signal become C minus T4Y minus U multiplied by T1, I obtain this signal. And once I obtain this signal, I find U by multiplying this signal um, with T2. And then using the same signal I multiplied by T3, I obtained this final equation, which of course have an unknown term U. So at this point, you solve the second equation for U, right? Basically, U equals to T2, T1, C minus T2, T1, T4 y minus t2 t1 u you can write u 1 plus t2 
T2, T1. I am just grouping this with this equals to T2, T1C minus T2, T1. T4, Y. Or you can write U to be T2, T1C minus T2, T1, T4, Y divided by 1 plus T2, T1. We find an expression for U. You take this, put it inside this equation, then you will have a longer equation. And once you obtain this longer equation, I can write here. So once you obtain this longer equation, you are going to have y equals to t3, t1, c minus t3, t1, t4, y minus t3, t1, that u signal, which is t2, t1, c, t2, t1, t4, y divided by 1 plus t2, t1. Now, to, co to combine everything on the same denominator, you can multiply this side and divide 1 plus t2, t1, divided by 1 plus t2, t1. This will give us y 1 plus t2, t1 equals to T3, T1, C minus T3, T1, T4, Y. Of course, I am out of space. Controls problems. This often happens in the classroom as well. Let me get rid of this part. This is multiplied by this. 1 plus T2, T1 minus T3, T1 multiplied by T2, T1, C t2 t1 t4 y is basically i just said this side multiplied by this to get rid of that denominator now if you look at this equation every signal in addition to these transfer functions t1 t2 t3 t4 only depends on the output input output input output so what you need to do group things that depending on y and also depending on C, then obtain Y over C to be your, you know, let's say the first part of this equation. Let's call it star part. Let's call the square part. Divided by the square part. And basically you're, you uh, simplify things until you have a numerator of the closed loop system divided by the denominator of the closed loop system and this basically will give you your closed loop systems transfer function so i covered two important examples here right um again if uh, you don't need you know you, if you happen to be a control engineer yes you may need to deal with very complex block diagrams but matlab does it for you um, and similarly, so if you want a video, let me know. And but still, we need to understand for simple block diagrams or how block how things work in block diagrams. I cover two examples. The first example, there are no unknown signals. I started from the end, closed the loop, obtained my closed loop system transfer function. This example was we had we encountered an unknown signal. We just give it a label, close the loop. And we added, we had an, another extra equation for the unknown signal. If we have multiple unknown signals, you will have multiple extra equations. At the end, you combine things until you have one transfer function that depends on only your signal-wise outputs and inputs. The rest, of course, transfer functions that comes from the block diagram. I hope you find this video helpful and let me know if you have any suggestions and uh, leave, leave a comment if you like. We can go from there.